Hey there, it's Carol Ritchie. It's time for your daily cheer. I am here in Shipshuana. Yes, you heard that right, Shipshuana. And we're going to see Rick Thomas, who's an illusionist. You can see right there in the back there. And so we had a lovely meal here, lots of great gift shopping here in the Midwest. So in Shipshuana, there's a lot to be seen. And look, there's a horse too, right over there. All right, you guys, have fun. Spread that daily cheer and get out, get some fresh air and explore this great world. And thanks so much for spreading cheer. And look who else I found in Shipshawana. Hey, what's up, my friend? Hey, Jeffrey Allen here. Hey, who's well, with you right over there? I'm Marshall. That's DJ Weber. Hey, what's the up, my friend? famous magician. Yeah, so what are we doing oh, here today? We're having uh, I think fun. We're going to see Rick Thomas today. Yeah, this is great. This is great. So we're here in Shipshawana for this. And why should they come to Marshall? The American Museum of Magic. That's right. And, of course, Oy Amigos Restaurant. Yeah. Love you guys. Keep spreading that cheer. That's it. That moment, that experience, that's it. And to be part of that, to have that opportunity to uh, to be part of their life and do something like that means a lot. So the magic has always been something that I've mastered. But then I kind of put it to the side because it's not the most important part of the show. It's the relationship and the feelings that we have between us. And when the magicians rely on the trick to carry the show, I think that's a mistake. So I fight really hard to make sure that the magic is secondary. And if you fool somebody in the process, that's great, but I'm not there to fool you, just thoroughly entertained. And that mentally is how I play the game. That's my story. <laughs> Suggestions for girls? <laughs> you know, we would have everybody out here, but COVID's kind of thrown a wrench into everybody's lives. We have the show we, last year, uh, even with uh, the world shutting down, I was still able to do about 70 shows in Branson. I was on tour. We were in Colorado when we got shut down. Drove all the way back across the country. We shut the theater down in Branson. Uh, when they finally let us do uh, shows to, with 25%, we did it at a loss every show. We couldn't get people into the showrooms. But at least Branson, which the, the amazing part about it, I think we take great pride in it, is it was the only place anywhere on the face of the earth that live shows were being presented. And it was Branson. We did what we could. We pushed forward. This year I've got well over 200 shows planned in Branson. We, as of two weeks ago, opened our shows and there are more people now in Branson than we've seen in five to ten years. Awesome. Wonderful. The amount of people and the influx of just thousands of people just sick and tired of everything is phenomenal. And I think that that's what we're going to enjoy out here. I think Broadway and Vegas is going to be a little slower to get going. But we're very lucky that people aren't traveling outside of the U.S. yet, and they're rediscovering their own country. So that's what we're doing in Branson. We, we, uh, we, we have a show on Monday night, so we'll finish tomorrow. We'll drive back on Sunday and reopen our show Monday night. And we're just thrilled with the numbers. So we're still, we're still only, we have a thousand seat theater, and we're average about three to four hundred people a show. But we're still, and I, I think that you guys probably realized, I don't know how many of you have seen live shows recently, but once the curtain opens and the lights go out, it doesn't matter. Uh, I hope that you guys kind of feel, even with everybody spread out, it still was a good feeling. We were clapping enough, could you hear us? Say thanks for the veteran tribute. I was thrilled that you did it here too. It was wonderful. Something that we don't see in Vegas. No, no I understand. I, when I went out to Branson, after doing my show extensively out on the West Coast, uh, 
we don't talk about God and country. So when I came out to Branson and watched all the other shows, it wasn't that I anticipated copying the shows. Because most of the shows in Branson spend about 25 minutes trying to sell merchandise. And I'm not into really, I mean, I talk about the Tigers and a couple things, but I just kind of keep it. But I thought that it was important, and, and it just kind of came to me uh, because of my challenges in China. Uh, the story just worked out that I was able to talk about the vets, and it means something. And honestly, not a single word I speak on that stage is a made-up story. Everything is something that's happened in my life, and I think that's why it works. I, I remember when I was learning fresh fish sold here today <laughs> was the day yes. that I wanted to get rid of the basic patter and said, I'm never going to do that. I tried to do it, and it just didn't work because it wasn't here. You know? And it's easy enough, really, is to just look at your own life and figure out how your magic fits into your life and come up with your own stories. Instead of, instead of trying to create, uh, memorize a pattern. So that, that was my fresh fist. I can't even say it. <laughs> but that's good. And then um, Tara, um, with her family, she is actually, as I said, from Zimbabwe. Born and raised there. Her father from England, her mom from Australia. And they, uh, her father and mother were in Zimbabwe and they had their three sisters. Three sisters. And uh, her father passed on, her mother and sisters are now back in Australia. And Tara's with me here in the United States. And of course, we were with the Illusionists just a few years ago. We had the chance to do the Sydney Opera House. Uh, and that was a pleasure to go out there and be there with her family. And uh, we plan on now going back out and doing our own show at the Opera House. 